So, it, you know, I've had passions in my life. They've always been, they always revolved around the issues like this. Uh, certainly school choice has been one, and it is one I am still committed to entirely. I'm absolutely positive that if we truly want to improve the quality of education in the state of Colorado, which we do, which we must, yes. then there is something we can actually do about that, and it is to unlock the door, you know, unlock the door to the government school system that has kept so many kids impoverished, not just financially as they grow up, but, but educationally impoverished. And it's a I do not blame the people in the system. My wife is a teacher. She taught for 27 years. I was a teacher. I taught for eight years. I know the work. I know how difficult it is. It's not a problem with the people that are there. It is a problem with the system itself. It is a government monopoly. Government monopolies never work to improve whatever they're doing. And so it's not surprising that Denver Public Schools has a dropout rate now approaching 50%. For Hispanic and black children, it's closer to 65%. This is not a school system. You know, all it is is, is this, this old industrial model activity where you got some people coming, to, you know, adults coming, children coming, meeting for a few hours a day, we call it education. It's not. It's just a process. It's a system. And it's long since really uh, been discredited. And it's not the fault of the people in it, as I said. So we have to change that. How do you change it? You do it the same way you would do it in your own business. When you know that what you're doing isn't working, and somebody, it, you know, it, it wouldn't matter to you, would it, if you were the only business in town. If you're the only place to get whatever it is you're selling, then it wouldn't matter how poor the service was or even the quality of the product. You're the only place in town where are people going to go. So the only thing that will improve that situation is competition. Amen. And the only way to get competition in that marketplace is through the So uh, So when people say I'm a, I'm a one issue candidate, they used to say that when, when Ben and I were doing the, the presidential thing, and I always go, well, at least I have an issue. <laughs> well, more than some of you have got here in this campaign, so as far as I can tell. And yeah, I do offer you something. Um, Kelly was uh, sitting right up there, was interviewing me just a little bit ago, and uh, she she quoted something that was in the in the Denver Post, I guess, over the weekend. Sunday. Um, in the Sunday paper. Now I have to tell you, I uh, I avoid as much as I possibly can touching the Denver Post, opening the paper, because, because I might just have to even look at Michael Litwin's face. Oh. And, and that's always a kind of an ugly experience, uh, literally in, in He's moving. Huh? He's moving. He's moving. Hallelujah! Hey! That's a good one. At any rate, uh, he evidently wrote something, and I, I really do not, I swear, and I just, I, I try my best to zoop, you know, right past that, that second page, and if I want to read it at all. Uh, and uh, but according to Kelly, he said the reason he really doesn't like me. He, by the way, really does not like me. <laughs> Holy mackerel! This fellow, I, I'm telling you, I just I think he does have that doll up there, you know, with pins and stuff, <laughs> sticking in a tank cradle doll. Um, but he said, what the, the the problem with this guy is, he is who he says he is. <laughs> <laughs> Things, you know? Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm completely guilty. I am the person I tell you I am. I, I'm sorry, I guess, but uh, that's the way it is. And uh, my family may not like it, but uh, you, you know what? It's the only way I can be. It, it is. Um, I've been in this business a while, as I always say, it's not my first rodeo. And and, and I get just as frustrated, just as as cynical, I suppose, as anybody else out there when you hear people say things that you know are not true and they're saying it to one audience and, and boy, this this last little go around with the with the, the mayor, it's incredible. We're in Pueblo, 
speaking in Pueblo. And uh, of course, it's a union town, right? So when he's speaking, and it, it, it's a debate, I mean, we're debating. And when you listen to him in Pueblo talk about the union, I mean, it's the greatest, the greatest thing, and he'll never do anything to stop it all. Now we get to the Colorado Association of Commerce and Industry, or the uh, Denver Chamber of Commerce, and it's, well, I can, well, I'll look into it. it. Might be something we'd have to change is that, you know, the executive order that might have to be, might have to be, but again, I said, I have to we'll look at it for a while, maybe a couple of years. Well, it's just two different people, right? Talking to two different audiences. And you see that all the time in this business, and it is incredibly frustrating. And you say to yourself, no wonder, no wonder people say, that's a lousy business, it's a lousy, you know, <coughs> excuse me, people that are arguing, they're not, uh, they're not honest, and you know, oftentimes I'm afraid they're right. So, uh, no, I, I always say, if you want to know something, people are asking you for a, for a vote, and they're telling you about what they're going to do. There's only really one way you can possibly have any feeling of, uh, uh, that they're telling you the right thing, and that is if they have done something similar to what they're asking you for, and you can see what they've done. Because that's really it. It's why in the business you are, when you hand out a, a you know, if somebody comes in to, to a, apply for a job, you give them a, a, an application, and on that application it usually says, what have you done before this? And if they list it, then you call those people up and say, how did they do it? Well, my friends, I'm asking you for a job. I'm asking you to be governor. I'm applying for the job of governor of the state of Colorado. It is incumbent upon you to say, well, what have you done? And how did you do it? Because I can tell you anything about what I'm going to do. I can make any promise in the world. And the only way you'll know whether I can begin to fulfill those promises or even mean them is to determine what I did in, in a, a similar capacity. And I have, in the state legislature, elected in 1976, in the, in the Congress of the United States, elected in 1998, in the 10 years I spent there, the, the uh, six in the state legislature, I, I've cast a lot of votes probably somewhere near 20,000, we tried to calculate it a while back, 20,000 votes, which goes to show you how much junk you are confronted with <laughs> in any of these offices. Most of them, luckily, are things like, you know, post office namings or whatever. Not important. But let's say 10%, let's say 2,000 in that time were substantive. Well, they get rated. There's an organization. You don't have to listen to me. You don't have to believe what I say about who I am, because luckily there's a group out there. It's called the American Conservative Union. It's been around for many years. They have one job. They rate elected officials on how they voted. And so they go back to 1976 and they start there, and they end in 1998, and they rate, it's called your lifetime rating. And my lifetime rating with the American Conservative Union is 97.2%. So, so you, can, you can be concerned that I was wrong 2.8% of the time. I, I understand that, but I'm only human. You know, who, who knows what that was all about? At any rate, I can tell you this, and, and, and you know I mean it. Most of you do know me. I, I see lots and lots of friendly faces that I've seen. Uh, before in, in, in many different venues, but um, you, do, you do know who I am. You do know when I tell you something, I will work as hard as I can with every ounce of energy God will give me. Uh, and I pray for that all the time, and I ask you to do the same, by the way, for me, my family, for all of us up here on the stage. Please, uh, uh, you can do a lot of things for us, and you can vote for us, and I hope you will, and you can send, it, send me money, she'll spend it like that, and, and We'll get uh, we'll get commercials out, nothing flat. But you can also just say a prayer to for every for all of us. Um, I do ask that, and I believe that it matters. Um, and uh, and I also believe that you should say it for our state, and I think you should stay, say a prayer to for our nation because 
heaven's knows. It needs those prayers. It needs your involvement. It needs you paying attention to what's going on here. You can't just leave this anymore to somebody else. I don't know how many times Bay and I have heard people, and I know in our office people come in and say all the time, I've never voted for Thorpe, or I've never given a politician a dime before in my life. Uh, really, it's just it's amazing. Every place we go, somebody comes up and says that, sometimes two or three people. And it, it, it's, you, your heart just, you know, <laughs> I keep thinking, what, what can I do? What can I do? And, and except to tell you, I, I will do my best. I will try my best. And with your help, um, this will work, you guys. It's amazing. It's kind of a God thing. Thank you all very, very much for your time.